I'm a Muslim, as you know, right? Yeah. But the question is, let's go back to basics. Okay. What's the purpose of life? Why are we here? Um, to give life purpose. Is there a fixed purpose of life that exists whether or not we exist? To exist, right? What I mean is like, if you, is there a solid objective purpose of life or is there no objective purpose, purpose of life? differ from person to person? That's what I'm asking you. Is yeah. it like that? Is it subjective or is it objective? It is. It is it like, person to person. how do you know? Because we are all different. We're all different? Yeah. But tree, how do you, yeah. A tree, yeah, it yeah. has its duty. Sure. A human being sure. has a set of duty. Sure. And uh, that set of duty changes. Sure. Small. Okay, but let's let's think about the, let's talk about the stuff which we know for a fact. Yeah. Okay. So we exist, correct? Yeah. Okay. The universe exists. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. What's everything in the universe doing? Existing. Existing, ex accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree that everything in the universe is following the laws of nature? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one continuity. Every single thing in the universe yeah. is following the laws of nature. Yeah. Yes. All right. So the tree is following the laws of nature. You're following the laws of nature, I'm following the laws of nature. Exactly. How would you differentiate a human being uh -huh. from everything else in the creation? What's different uh, about a human being? Sentience. Beautiful. Yeah, I agree with you. Sentience, free will, etc. Yeah. Would it make sense to suggest that if everything in creation yeah. is following, and we both believe in a creator, yeah. but if everything in creation is following the laws of nature, okay. could you say that it makes sense, therefore, for the purpose of human existence to submit to the laws of nature? Yeah. Okay. And if the creator created the laws of nature, yeah. would it make sense to say that it, the, the, the purpose of life is to submit to the creator? I agree on submitting to the creator. But, I, but I, where I differ from yeah. is that I don't believe that they're just one right path. I believe that you see, you take a class of 50, yeah? You get one teacher. She teaches in one way. Do you think all children will understand it the same way? No, I agree with you. And I believe that. I, I agree that yeah. in, this, in this analogy that you've said, yeah. it's there's many different ways of learning, there's many different ways of yeah. experiencing. Yeah. But we're not talking about that. I'm, we've gone back and said, I'll oh, ask a question. Is there a fixed purpose or is there a subjective purpose? So what you're saying is that there's a subjective purpose. Yeah. I'm saying is that if we look at the continuities that exist in the universe, where the tree is submitting to the laws of nature, the yeah. atom is submitting to the laws of nature, yeah. the sun is submitting to, and you and me are submitting to the laws of nature, then it makes sense to suggest that if there is a fixed purpose, yeah, okay. that that fixed purpose would be to submit to the laws of nature. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, so that's a fixed, yeah, submit to God, right? Yeah. So I'm saying that's a fixed purpose, it's not a subjective purpose anymore, is it? Yeah. Okay, so the question is how do we submit to God? So if you read all the books, yes. Right, if you read all the books, yes. there's going to be uh, words yeah. which is repeated all day. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Uh, don't steal. Yeah. Don't cheat. Yeah. Don't lie. Yeah. Right? Remember me. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And do good in my name. Perfect. I agree. We agree. Yeah. Here's the only thing I would say, yeah? yeah? Reading all the books is a good start, no problem. Read all the books. Read the yeah. Quran, read the Bhagavad Gita, read the Bible, read whatever. Yeah. But the intention is to find what? Guidance yeah. from the Creator on yeah. how to submit to Him. Yeah. That's what the intention is. Yeah. Okay, so if we find that some of those books are corrupted, some of those books are contradictory, some of those books are not preserved, would it make sense to say that therefore we should disband in those books and we should accept only the books which are preserved which don't have contradictions, etc. So, so when it comes to me, yeah. uh, I was born into a Muslim family. Pardon? I was born into a Muslim family. Yeah. But uh, I got out of the yeah. religion. Sure. But I thought it was I thought the religion was wrong. Yeah. But indeed I did identify that it's not the faith, yeah. it's the people that follow exactly. the faith which exactly. made me leave. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. But by the time I came back, yeah. I had done a lot of research. Uh, I've been searching for the truth and then I decided that even the current existing Islam is not whatever people follow, majority follows is not Islam. I don't call myself a Muslim, I call myself a believer and I live the life of a believer. I get what you're saying but what I'm saying to you is this, right? We, we've discussed, just to, to take you through what we've discussed already, yeah. we discussed whether it makes sense to suggest that there's an objective, fixed, yeah, anchored you, purpose. And we said, creator, submit to the creator. creator. Alright, we agreed. And then the book. second part of what we talked about yeah. is the books, yeah? yeah? The reason why books are important yeah. is because how do we know how to submit? We can only know how to submit if the creator 
communicates to us. You said rightly that we have sentience. That's something that, or free will, volition, sentience, whatever you like, that's not something that the rest of creation has. In that sense, the tree doesn't have moral capacity, right? Yeah, it's less, it's a lesser sentient being than us. Exactly. So now, what I'm trying to say to you is that, so therefore, it makes sense to follow the guidance, it makes sense to follow what is the purpose of life, which is to submit to God, right? I agree. So then we look at the books. Yeah. Of the books, in your estimation, you've done a lot of research, yeah? I've, I've not you've a, done lot, a lot of research. But I'm, I'm still on that. Uh, yeah, but you've done like a religious uh, survey. Yeah, you've read I the Bible? A, I, yeah, I did. You've I read, did read the, at least part, portions of the Bible, I do. portions of the Bhagavad Gita, yes. of course, portions of the Quran. Yes. Frankly I've speaking, in your opinion, yeah. of those books, which do you think yeah. possesses the truth if you had to bank on it I, as i said before brother all books contain the truth it's just that there's more addition in other books okay but if i were to ask you right yeah these books are claiming to be from god like for example the bible is claiming to be from god the bhagavad gita is claiming to be from, they say that they it's say kind that, of kind but of it's all written by man Sh sure yeah, but i'm written by man. No, but that's what we're trying to say yeah now how do we determine if a book is written by man if written by god let's go put criterion if god is all-knowing there cannot be contradictions inside the book, right? Yeah. Okay. Is, have you come across any contradictions in the Quran? Uh, no. Okay. But the Bible, you would agree, has contradictions? Yeah. Okay. The Bhagavad Gita, you would agree, has contradictions? Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that yeah, is so a necessary I, I condition. I agree that this is the book which hasn't been altered as much, the least amount of altering. Obviously, there's the Kirat and all of that, there's a slight variation, but the message yeah. stays the same. Yeah. But when it comes to Islam, it's no longer about the book, bro. Yeah. So you're a what? Are you, no, why not? Do you go as a Su Shia or Sunni? Sunni. Huh? I'm Sunni. You're a Sunni. Hmm. So what make like uh, if it's all about the book? Why do you call well, yourself I mean, a Sunni? Let's both of the Shias and the Sunnis accept the book, though. Yeah, they do. But it doesn't matter. They, I mean, like, these are just names. How do they differ? How, yeah. do, how does a Christian differ to a Muslim? We're, look, Shias and Sunnis both are Muslim in a sense. So we're not talking about that. Like in a sense, I'm, let's just I'm say these differences is, Islam for us. Is no longer about the book anymore. Yeah. Okay, but the book. how do we define what Islam is? How do I define it? It's total submission to the Creator. The okay, but how do we how do we do that? Uh, first, by looking into yourself. Sure. Yeah. But then, would you accept that the book tells us? It does help. It does guide you. Okay, but it does guide you. Do, but as we said before, look, we have so criteria. All books, all books tell you to fast. Right? Yeah, you said that. Yeah, they, yeah. they all tell you to... All books tell you to believe in one God. Yeah. Effectively, bro. Even the Bhagavad Gita does, right? Yeah, they, yeah. So what they we're saying is that, look, if you think about it, if we do, if we use your, me your method, your method is good. Yeah. Let's look at the continuities that exist in the books, the major world religions, yeah? So we look at the Quran, we look at the Old Testament, we look at the New Testament, we look at even whatever book. You'll find that in the ancient world religions, the major continuity is that you should submit to one God. I agree on that. Okay, so if that's the, if that's the continuity and being good, yeah? Yeah. What I'm saying is that, which of those books represents that reality the most? The fact that you should submit to one God. When it comes to the books? Yeah. This talks about it a bit more clearly. Yes. Compared, compared to the Okay, so when it, comes to, when it comes to Tawheed or monotheism, yeah. you would accept, okay. So we talked about preservation, we yeah. talked about lack of contradiction, yeah. we talked about main theology. Yeah. And so you're accepting that the Quran is superior to the other books? Yeah, I do agree that this hasn't been changed. Yeah, and so you but accept I, on these on these key criterion yeah. that the Quran is actually superior to the other it books? Is, it is. Okay, yeah. so the, is that significant or is it insignificant? It is significant. Okay, that's all I'm going to leave you with today. Yeah. But, but just open your... Look, look, look. The issue that we have as Muslims right now, yeah? I get, I get you. You know that what, uh, what the London's going through right now? What yeah, India the is right, going yeah, through yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. Uh, China, you go to any other country. Yeah. It's because not of the not because of the book. Yeah. It's because of us yeah. following people yeah. after the prophet. Yeah, I accept you. And we are not concentrating. But on that's God. not what Islam is. You said it yourself. Islam is submitting to yeah, the book. But see now I watch your videos. Yeah. I see you guys at speakers corner. Yeah. And I all I think of it is that like why are you guys going off at you know each other? Yeah, okay, maybe you have a point. No, that's Maybe you have a point. But what we do, what we do and what Islam is are two different things. Exactly. Yeah, so I want you to think about a book. Because Islam is, look, look, Islam essentially is, we're talking about the book here, bro. Yeah? We're talking about Quran and Sunnah. We're talking about the life of the Prophet Muhammad and we're talking about the Quran. Yeah. I just want you to focus on those three things we talked about. 
the preservation, the lack of contradictions, and the main theology. That's all that you need to think about. Yeah. But do you think for the world right now, yeah. that is that what we need? No, what's happening with Muslim people, yeah. it's always going to be incongruent with what the book says. Do you get it? There's two billion Muslims. There's always going to be a subsection of Muslims who are going against the book. I'm trying to say to you that that's not a representation of the book. So if I say that I can follow Islam through just the book, would you agree? Yes, absolutely. You don't need the people. Yeah, if I say that I'm a Quranist. No, I mean obviously we believe in Quran and Sunnah. That's what I'm trying to say to you. The, yeah. the example of the Prophet, because the book, the Quran tells us to follow the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Think but about see, it, bro. But, but when it comes to Sunnah. Yeah. Uh, the hadiths were written 300 years after the. Uh, they weren't written. They were compiled. Compiled 300 years after. So what? So no, but no, the first of all, the for, no, but all of that look, the, the hadiths weren't all compiled at that time. There were efforts that were made in the first 50 years, 60 years of Islam that compiled hadith. Yeah. Yeah. That was compilation, but written, it was written at the time of the Prophet Muhammad. There's a hadith in Bukhari, it says Uqtubli ibn Abi Shah, which I, is I, at the time I of the Prophet Muhammad. There is a lot of sahih when it comes to the Bukhari and Yeah, Muslim. bro, the, the way the, the Quran... I believe that when it comes to the Sahih Bukhari, it's not 100% all authentic. I agree with you. It's not 100% all authentic. There are hadiths in there which may be and problematic. That's, where, that's what divides us. But if you believe that, hadith. no problem. But if like, all Muslims, they follow this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there will be division. But as I said to you, bro, like, as I say, if you say the Quran is what I believe, and I don't, for example, Bukhari, you'll need the hadith on how to pray, on how to do wudu, how to do hajj, how to, etc., the life of the Prophet. But then you maintain a level of academic scrutiny of the hadith, even the Sahih one, you're still a Muslim, bro. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And that will give you a grounding in your life and a purpose. Because let's be honest, bro, let's be frank. Compare your life before Islam and after. Let's be, let's be frank. I tell me. my life before God yeah. and after God. And tell me, what, how has it been? Now, how has it been? With God? With, no, without. without. Now. No, no, I'm with God. No, I, mean, no, I don't mean with God. No religion. Yeah, without religion, how is it? Huh? How's your life? Without religion? Yeah. Good. What are you doing now? Like? I'm working on uh, what the Lord has told me to do. I know, but what I'm trying to say to you is, yeah. if we're being honest, when you have a religion, when you have a path and a guidance, yeah. yeah it gives you a certain level of certainty, a certain level of purpose, a certain yeah. level of objectivity yeah. that you can never get from your own formulations in your mind. Yeah. But I believe that uh, God speaks to you directly. Okay, no problem. You can believe that's not an issue. I believe that as well in some ways. Yeah. What I'm trying to say to you is, what you said and I said, which we agreed on, in the last part of the conversation was what we need to focus on. Yeah. The fact that the Quran is preserved, doesn't have contradictions, and the main theology is pristine about monotheism, I want you to just think about that. You said, I said, is it significant or insignificant? You said it's significant. I'm saying, entertain the idea that here you have a book, here you have a religion, See, brother, and just I, entertain I the idea. I don't have issue with the books. Yeah. I have an issue with the religion. So what is the religion? The religion is composed of the books. It is what the books the are. People and yeah. what they follow. No, but that's, why Culture you don't? Okay, fine. But why is that it's the religion? Politics. Why is that the religion? Who defines the religion like that? The world? No, I mean, that's not Islam yeah, is I'm not a sum of its people. So right now I'm from Sri Lanka, yeah. Yeah. And uh, like in Sri Lanka, Muslims are somewhat looked down upon. Yeah. Because of all the bombings and all of that jazz. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, even right now, a lot of Brits. But let's like Sri Lanka, bro. Sorry to say, the ones who are doing the most bombings were the Hindus. Uh, the, the 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 Tamils, Tamil tigers. Uh, that, that's. That's all new. Yeah, no, but still, I mean, if you're going to say the Muslims are looked down upon in Sri Lanka because of that, there sorry was, to say, you're like... No, no, there was a new bomb in Sri Lanka. Yeah, but Tamil Tigers were used to do suicide bombs and it's been written yeah, about yeah, and pub so. published and stuff, like how many, they used to do it more yeah, than Muslims. right now, the, uh, the Matrix is trying to get the Muslims, right? Yeah. They're pin, trying to pin the Muslims yeah. down, yeah? Yeah. But if Muslims in general, they follow the religion in the right way. And if you first preach the right way through the book only... Bro, that you, but the the thing, what you're saying is not un-Islamic. What you're saying is fine. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, hit the fundamental issue is that you're disassociating with the religion because of the people. I'm saying to you that if oh, every Muslim but, in the world... But if right the, if, now, Islam if is every Muslim, the book. If every Muslim in the world died, two billion of them, yeah. yet Islam would still exist through the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah. It's a concept. It's not something which depends on the existence or non-existence of human beings. Human beings will be sometimes in line with the Quran, 
and sometimes they'll be out of line with it. I agree with what you're saying. We're not, we're not up to scratch. Last hundred years, we have not really been delivering what we need to be delivering as an ummah. I agree with that. You can carry those sentiments and still be a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think about that? I believe that a Jew can be a Muslim. Anyone can be a Muslim. A Christian can be a Muslim. can be a Muslim. Even a Hindu. Meaning they can come... No, but if they believe in the book... The oneness of God. Do you understand? In the end, yeah. being a Muslim is not believing just in the book. Yeah. It's all about God. I not, get it, but... Not, not a materialistic but, but, thing. No, but what I'm saying to you is that God has explained to us how to live life. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, and, and we've just accepted some books, that some books... Not everyone thinks the same way. Not everyone sees the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you might understand English and maybe Arabic. Yeah. I understand English and Sinhala. Sure. Yeah. If you preach to me in Sinhala or English, I'll understand. You get where I'm going. I get what you're saying to you, but yeah. what I'm saying to you is that you've accepted that other books are inferior to the Quran. You've accepted that. So, what I'm saying is, why would you accept that which is inferior in place of that which is superior? I'm saying, if you're going to follow our guidance, why would you mesh, mix, amalgamate something which is lesser than, not preserved, contains contradictions, and doesn't have a proper theology with that which does? It doesn't make any sense. If something is pure, why mix it with that which is impure? So what I'm trying to say to you is that if we accept, and we can rationalize this. I, I, I do accept this book. Yeah. I don't accept uh, the entire set of hadiths. That's my issue. Sure, no problem. I mean, you can still be a Muslim without accepting the entire set of hadith. But you're, as I said, if you, like the Quran itself, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنِ yeah? It says that we have sent down the Quran لِتُبَيِّنَهُ لِلنَّاسِ So that you can show it to the people. So this is in Surah Al-Nahl, chapter 16, yeah. to the Prophet Muhammad. And it's saying to the Prophet that you have to show it. So you have to accept as, as many hadiths as would allow you to know who the Prophet is and would allow you to practice the five pillars of Iman, uh, of Islam and the six pillars of Iman. I'm, you don't have to, I'm not saying that, you know, you cannot, be, you cannot scrutinize even that which some scholars say is a strong hadith. Major scholars of Islam have scrutinized that which some scholars have called a strong hadith. Yeah, that's not a problem. But once you come into Islam, you've got the book, you've got the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That would you agree that that's a more superior way of living? Uh, following a way of life. Yeah. Yeah. So would you like Being to? Yes. Would you like to do the shahada from today? Yeah. No. No. And and what, what I mean by the shahada, yeah. you're starting afresh now. You're starting new. You're gonna identify as a Muslim, yeah, as a Muslim. Ah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. You know why? Why? Because I believe that identifying yourself with something other than a human uh, causes issues and division. Okay, can, can I ask? And I don't like it because I even even identifying yourself as a Muslim uh, as a human causes division. Because you're you're a human. If you say I'm a human, even though you are, you call yourself. No, no, no. If you say I'm a human, that causes division. How? Because nowadays you have transhumans. You have you have robot humans. You have people that mix with. Uh, a human. Not really. It's a separate category. You have animals. You're dividing yourself. Why would? You, what, how can you justify philosophically dividing yourself from the rest of the animal kingdom? Why don't you just identify as a living being? Anything you say or do about yourself causes division. Causing division itself is not a problem. It's causing the right kind of division. That's the, that's what you should be doing. Like for example, if Hitler was alive. Yeah. And he was doing what he was doing. And people were going against him. And then someone came out and said, well, actually, I want to oppose him. Would you say that that's irregular? Or would you say that's uh, warranted? No. Warranted. Yeah. But that causes division. It does, yeah. But it's the right kind of vision. Yeah, I believe that being a human is also the right kind of division. I understand what you're saying. You see, now, but when you how do you substantiate that? I call myself a Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. I call myself a believer. Sure. I'm always. I'm all about God. I'm all about the Creator because I was in a very, very low time in my life, and uh, you know, God introduced Himself to me. Right. I had this whole awakening process, really? and ever since, like, it's no longer a belief. God is. God's existence is not a belief for me. It's annoying. You know. I know that God is. And I believe, I know that it's one, God is one. But when it comes to religion, I've got a lot of issues because I know religion was created because of politics and that even after, like even though the book is amazing, this book is amazing, the content is good, Islam, Muslim, doesn't depend on only this book. 
you all say, okay, you need to follow this book and you need to follow the Sunnah. That's what makes you a Muslim. That's what the general, that's what you all say, right? You need Sunnah to be a Muslim. You need right? to follow the way of the Prophet. Yeah, but because the Quran tells us to do that. Yeah, that's this one verse. Yeah. Follow your Prophet. No, there's many, many, many. Like. Like I said, like for example, chapter 16. Yeah. We have sent you the book so you can show it to the people. Obey God and obey the messenger. 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 Obey the Right now, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the basis, okay? Yeah. We're talking about the five pillars of Islam, we're talking about six pillars of Iman, we're talking about the basis. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that if you follow that, bro, I can guarantee you, with all due respect, there's nothing that will give you a sense of purpose, meaning, power, strength, um, that will avert anxiety from your life than that. I do follow, I do follow uh, my own, not my own. It's a mixture. I go to the Kovil. But as we I said before, the, the, the mixture I don't make sense. Huh? The mixture doesn't make sense. We explain why. Do we explain that though. Yeah, you did explain that yeah. when it comes to books. Completed. Sure. So why mix? Why mix that which is inferior with that which is inferior? In the end, for me, it's mm. not mixing. Okay, why is it? It's the same thing which has been repeating from day one, from Adam. Yeah. What I follow, or what I think that I follow, right? Is but the people in the past followed because up until Islam came there was no right way right but there were Muslims and there were believers who followed and give glo gave glory to the creator that's why the Quran says I get what yeah. you're saying the Quran says bin huwa at in kuntum bring a book that is more in guidance than this book and the Torah and I will follow it meaning if there's a book that's better in terms of guidance go and follow it no problem but what we're, what we're trying to say is that when you put all the criterion in place, like we talked about preservation, lack of contradiction, the basic theology, we can add to that, for example, the predictions of the Quran. The fact that the Quran predicts the future to indicate its authenticity. Stuff like, for example, the Roman Empire, chapter 30, verses 1 to 6, it says that the Romans have been defeated, but in three to nine years, that they would defeat the enemy, yeah, and that uh, victory will be given to them, okay? And exactly eight years later, that's what happened. And you have even non-Muslim texts, like the Chronicles of, uh, of Chrysippus, sorry, the Chronicles of Theo uh, Theophanes, yeah. which is a Roman text that says that this event took place. If I were to say, I don't know, you watch cricket, Sri Lanka is gonna beat India in a cricket match, such and such, such and such, and then the opposite happened, it would discredit me. The Bible or any other book does not have this level of predictive success. No other book has this level of predictive success. So what we're talking about here is that you have a book that has no contradictions. You have a book that's preserved. You have a book that's got guidance, which is clear. The basic theology is very clear. And that has predictions, which are on I the mark it, each time. That I accept this book. You accept it? I do. I do. Okay, excellent. So the book is telling you to accept but, the Sunnah as well. Yeah, but that's a bit weak. But God always say, don't partner with anyone. Yeah. I know, I know, but the Sunnah is just but following the way of the Prophet. You all say that you all do follow the word of Prophet, but how do you all know for 100% that you guys are actually following the word of Prophet? Okay, well, I'm saying to you, look, bro, look, look at this, yeah? In terms of the hadith, there's about a million hadith. Yeah. One million. Like Ahmed ibn Hanbal, one of the hadith scholars, said there's a million hadith. Elf, elf, which is a million. Of it, really, you've got about. 10,000 which have been preserved. The rest of them is like chains and this and that. So imagine like what we're talking about here. What's 10,000 out of a million? 1% or something? Uh, yeah. 1%? Okay, so we reject 99% of hadith, bro. <laughs> what we're talking about. So I'm saying the idea of rejecting hadith, that's fine. That's what we've been doing for the last 1,400 years. But what I'm trying to say to you is, okay, in that 10,000, the collection of Bukhari and Muslim and those ones, even, you're saying, even within those ones, the hadith that were rejectable. I'm saying, that's not a far away concept. The old hadith scholars used to point contradictions, like in, in Bukhari you have mu'allaqat, you have hadith that are considered to be weak. In, in Muslim you have mutabaat, hadith that are considered to be weak. Yeah. It's not a real problem, bro. bro. What I'm trying to say to you is, so long as you have a template of following the Prophet, 
following the six pillars of Iman, you know who the Prophet is. If for academic reasons someone comes and says this hadith and that, yeah, all the prophets, all the prophets, yeah. Do you not accept that this is a superior way of living than just trying to like guide yourself? So I tried praying five times. Yeah. Tried. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because uh, it does give me, it makes, keeps me more cleaner. Yeah. Uh, and I need to be uh, more uh, dedicated to the cause. Yeah. Which gives me discipline. Yeah. And etc. Yeah. So I do adapt this. So, okay, so you, bro. How about this, bro? Think about this. But I still don't like calling myself. I, I know, but I, here's what I'm trying to say to you, yeah? Religion has left a bad taste in the my Quran mouth. The Quran itself, if you accept the Quran. Yeah. Okay. The Quran says, the but, Quran says, the Quran says, Woman ahsanu qawlan, who is better in speech? Min men. Then who? Da'a ila Allahi, calls to the way. Wa amila saliha, and does good works. Wa qala, and says, innani min al-Muslimin, I am a Muslim. A so believer. if you, I'm a, I'm a Muslim, Muslim, Muslimin. I'm a believer. Muslim. What does it Muslimin. Mean? Submitter, submitter. Yeah. Mu'minin means believer. Okay. Muslimin means submitter. submitter. Yeah, okay. You can, all you got to do is call yourself a submitter. Muslim. But the word in the Quran is Muslim. Okay. You identify as a Muslim the way the Quran wants you to because it's a superior book. You live with your five pillars a day. You follow the way of the Prophet. You follow the Quran. You are initiated with God. Are you willing to do the shahada and identify? I done the shahada. Do it again today and start okay. start afresh. Okay. okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Ilaha illallah. Go on. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Khalas. Now you identify as a Muslim. Yeah. Now you follow the Quran. Now you follow the submitter. Fine. And now you follow the Quran, the Sunnah. Start fresh, bro. Start fresh. Wallahi, I, the brothers that are watching this and the sisters, they now consider you as a real family member. Because I think we've, we've gone, we've we've we've, <laughs> we've gone through, we've gone through a pro, we've gone through a process in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's better like this, brother. Honestly, I know what you're saying about identification, and you want to be a bit more of a free spirit. Yeah. But you you can still do that. I believe that you can still do that. Yeah. And not create division. I know what you're saying. But like we said before, some division is necessary. We said that. It is necessary, but not The division of justice and justice, not too much. I agree. Bro, yeah. your sentiments are fine. Yeah. But just maintain your identification with Islam. Maintain your identification with Quran and Sunnah. See, Pray five times a day. Me, what's your goal in life? To worship God. Worship submit, to, submit to God. Submit to God. Yeah. What has God given you to do? Pardon? What's your duty? How do you submit? How do you... Uh... So obviously there's personal things and there's yeah. communal things. Yeah. The personal things are the ones, ritualistic stuff that we've heard, we've heard yeah. praying five times a day, doing this and the other. And then the communal things, which is to be a vice sprint in the earth. Yeah. You know, to be a, an example for the earth. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So I get what you're saying. So should you call, like, do I have to call myself that in order to be that? Well, the Quran says you got to call you, who's better than the one who calls himself that? Do you get it? So I, look, I'm telling you what the Quran says, not my opinion. We consider it to be a superior book. So, you've got the book now. Yeah. You've got I actually the didn't have the book. Alhamdulillah. It's not fresh, brother. Honestly, I'm very proud of you, man. I like you. you really uh, you're good. a very good critical thinker, my friend. Yeah. And I think the people have seen that. I hope things change in the world. Me too, brother. Yeah, and I hope that we, as Muslims, yeah. change as well. Fantastic. In the right way. Come with the brothers. They'll they'll give you like. Um, no, I'll, be, I'll be flying back to Sri Lanka. Oh, are you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll keep in touch, brother, yeah? Definitely. Thank you so much, brother, yeah? Okay. Thank you. Take care, my friend. Yes, yeah. Take care, bro.